to get in the way of a child getting to Jesus? Is there anything we're doing? Some of us are thinking, no, I'm not doing anything. I don't, I don't stop any kids in any way from getting to them. But you know, one way I think we do stop children from getting to Jesus is by ignoring the need. It's, it's interesting, in Romans seven eighteen, Paul talks about something in his heart, and he says, I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do good, but I cannot carry it out. I heard one preacher call this the sins of omission, not the sins of commission. The sins of commission are where we would outwardly, blatantly do something that we know is wrong. That's a sin of commission. But there is also a sin of omission by ignoring the voice of God when he tells us to do something for the sake of another. How he's calling us to love another person and we go, la, 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 la. We don't want to hear it because it's inconvenient, because we think, feel like we don't have the time, or because we feel like we're incapable. Now, there's something that we heard at the Vineyard Leadership Conference a couple of weeks ago from Wes Stafford, the director of Compassion International. And he said that there is the 414 window of opportunity. And what this means is that a person's greatest window of opportunity to receive the kingdom of God in their heart is between the ages of 4 and 14 years of age. And what they found is that 80% of adults that say they're Christians and follow Jesus, 80% of them say that they got introduced to Jesus between 4 and 14 years of age. For me, it was when I was 16. I'm a little slow. George Barna, in his uh, Christian Research Institute, says that 35% of all the children in the U.S. say they're born-again Christians. And he followed up that saying that they became Christians by the time they were 13 years of age. And he followed up by assessing, he said this quote, If people do not embrace Jesus Christ as their Savior before they reach their teenage years, the chance of their doing so at all is slim. It'd be interesting for us to do a survey of how many of you became Christians through Sunday school, vacation Bible school, through your aunt, your mom, your grandma, before you were 14 years of age. Why don't you all raise your hand for those of you that have. Look around the room. There's a lot of hands sticking up. Okay? There's a, there's a pastor in Kani, Japan. His name's Hosoi Sensei. He has the Kani Vineyard Church. Years ago, he had the vision of knowing that because it's so hard to evangelize people in Japan, was they started having basically vacation Bible schools in their backyard when they planted their church. These children gave their lives to Christ at a young age. They discipled these kids through junior high, high school, college, and now those kids are all the young leaders in their church. Now it's a church of over 250 people, which in Japan that has only 0.4% of the population Christian, a church of 250 is a mega church. Most of the churches in Japan are under 20 people. He started with children. You've heard us mention the downtown campus that we want to start, that Paul is going to spearhead, Paul Watson is going to spearhead. One of the things that he wants to target is children in crisis. And that they want to start mentoring with children and do after school programs with them so that we can help these kids to have a chance to get tutoring, to get social interaction with adults that care for them, and to help these kids to eventually be introduced to the love of Christ. By the way, Paul wanted me to let you all know that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, they're having their first meeting in a chapel on the corner of 8th and Colorado where they're going to have prayer and they're going to have some worship and a short teaching that they're going to continue to instill the vision in people to build a team to reach people in the downtown area. It's a great thing. So if you are interested in that, he said everyone is welcome. 
Do you know our children's ministry here? On a weekend, they minister to over 400 children a weekend. That's a lot of kids, isn't it? But as you can imagine, the number one universal problem in every church in America is not enough workers for the children. And so if you would feel called to help with the children, go to Peggy or to Seth and say, you know, I'd like to sign up and I'd like to help with the kids. I've never done it before, but I'd like to help. And they'll get you trained and they'll get you hooked up. Our, our serving evangelism team, I love what these guys do. On Wednesdays, they go to the swimming pool at Lincoln Park and they feed the kids lunch. Because a lot of the kids that go there, their parents drop them off and they don't have enough money to give them money to something to eat. And so they feed the kids. And then this is a cool thing. The city <coughs> then approached them and said, hey, you know, we closed the pool between 2 and 3 to give our lifeguards a break. And these kids just are running around in Lincoln Park wreaking havoc. Can you do something with these kids? And so those, those guys are there from 2 to 3, and they play games with them, and they're interacting with the kids. They're helping contain them and, and put order in those kids so that they don't get in the way of those kids coming to Jesus. Thanks for whoever started clapping. I can get a drink. <laughs> and then uh, Peggy told me that the MOPS ministry that we have, we have over a, a, we have a pretty large group of women, and many of them are unchurched women that come to MOPS uh, every other Wednesday. And then the women can drop off their preschool children in the nursery. And they love on those kids so that the moms can go and interact with other moms and be introduced to the love of Christ. The problem that we're having, not enough workers for those children. And Peggy's saying if we don't get some volunteers to help with mopettes, we may not be able to run mops this fall. So, you know, that's just the kind of things I hear and I go, Lord, are we getting away? of those kids coming to Jesus because it's inconvenient for us. Now, these are just some practical ways that we can get involved in some fashion that we can be a part of maybe impacting one kid's life. And so I keep coming back to asking the question, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want us to do? And I think as a church, if we truly want to be a church that is a church for the unchurched, is we, we just got to go full force and reach children. We, we've got to make this an environment that is welcoming and inviting for children and families. And the question is, is God prompting your heart? Is he saying, I want you to just step up and start volunteering maybe once a month? Can you, can you volunteer one Saturday night a month to work with the children? He may be even pushing you a step further and, and say something as radical and crazy of, I want you to consider being a foster parent. Or I want you to start looking into adopting a child. And you can think, well, I'm too old, but if Pastor Kirk at 51 can do it, maybe we can do it. I just read this book called Small Town, Big Miracle. And it's written by Bishop W.C. Martin. This book is an incredible book, and it's, I read it in like two days. It's a real fast read. And what Bishop Martin did was actually started with his wife, Donna. She got her sister and said, let's go to a, a training with the Department of Human Services about foster adoption. And so they went, and God grabbed their hearts, and they said, we're going to adopt. And so those two families adopted some foster kids. And these kids are, were the hardest, most damaged, emotionally disturbed kids in the system in East Texas. And so they adopted a, a three kids, one family and one kid, two kids and another family. And what happens is it started a brush fire in the church. And so here's a church in Possum Trot, East Texas. <laughs> Ever been there? I avoid Texas at all costs. 
I love Texans, but I avoid Texas. But anyway, this small church of 200 people, within a short time, adopted 72 kids. They've been on Oprah Winfrey. They've been on Good Morning America. It, it's a radical move of God because God started in the pastor's wife and broke her heart for foster kids. And they all adopted these kids. And the one thing that's amazing about all 72 of these kids because the whole community as a church embraced these kids together and they were raising these kids together, not one kid was put back in the system. Saved their lives. We're actually going to start an adoption fair. We're going to do an adoption fair in November. And I'm going to say it now so you guys can start praying about this. And I, I really have uh, a goal in my heart. And I always come up with these crazy numbers. But my goal is that Canyon View Vineyard, by the end of 2010, that we as a church would adopt 100 kids, domestically or internationally. Is this too far-fetched for a church of over 2,000 to do that? Don't clap because God may be speaking to you. <laughs> but, but I really do believe this is the heart of the Father. That he, he, His desire is to just wreck us for these kids that have no hope. That maybe don't have a future. That if they're not adopted, may be abducted and put into the sex trade business with human trafficking. There, there's so many unbelievable stories of what happens with orphans unless they're adopted into a loving home. Can we adopt them all? No. But maybe you can adopt one. So I'm going to have the worship team come up. What I'm challenging all of us to do, first and foremost, is to just pray. And you're, you're saying, Kirk, this is the craziest thing I have ever heard. There is no way we could even consider this. You know, if you pray, and if God puts it on your heart, believe you me, I know from experience, God will give you the grace to do it. And as we look back at verse 15, as Jesus tells the disciples, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms. He put his hands on them and he blessed them. So what is God calling us to do to follow in kind? Maybe, first of all, he's just calling you to pray. To pray for children in crisis. Or maybe there's a child that you know who has severe needs. It's just start praying for that child. There's nothing more impactful than the power of prayer. Maybe God's calling you to give financially to a ministry that works with children in crisis. But the question is, is that enough to just pray and just to give? Maybe he's calling you to actually say, you know, I've sat in the pews long enough. It's time that I start volunteering and we're going to start with the children. Maybe God's calling you to start looking into becoming a foster parent or adopting. The question is, what is God saying to you? And are you willing to respond? So let's stand as we worship here. And as we worship... Here's my prayer, and I'm just going to pray right now. God, I, I just pray that, Holy Spirit, that you would come and that you would move in our hearts. You would speak to each of us individually about what you would have us to do. Whatever level, Lord, tell us where to start and how to respond so that we don't get in the way of a child coming to you. To be blessed by you. Lord, as, as you're moving on these hearts, I just pray that you would speak into the people that are raising their hand now of exactly what you want them to do, how you want them to proceed. 
And I pray that you give them the ambition to just follow through now and to take the steps to follow you. And Lord, I pray that you bless them and that you open the doors for them so that they can walk through them in the name of Jesus. Now, you know, some of you others are saying, man, he's really trying to put a guilt trip on us. I, it's, hear me out. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just really saying this is the heart of the Father. This is a big thing to him. And so I think it's great that we as a church continue to embrace the things that we're doing for children. Amen to that? And, and he, I just want you to hear this loud and clear, okay? Don't ever do anything because Kirk said to. Okay, because you get all messed up if you do that. Do it if God is saying for you to do it. And the one thing is, is, is when we respond to God's promptings like that, you know what happens? Is you experience blessings that you would have never experienced before unless you stepped out to do those things. The blessings that Jane and I have received through Gracie have changed our lives forever. The joy she brings into our life and how tired she makes us. <laughs> we would have never experienced this unless we stepped out and risked ourselves and just jumped off the cliff and let God take us on the greatest ride of our lives. The other thing is, Jesus said, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. God is saying, maybe to some of you tonight, will you open up your heart to me like a little child? Will you just humbly and without fear come before me and let me wrap you in my arms? Will you allow me to put my hand on your head and bless you today? And maybe you have had skepticism and you've had questions and you've been cynical and you've been critical of the church and Jesus is saying, put all that aside and just see me and see my heart for you. And so God's saying, Open up your heart like a little child and receive my kingdom tonight. And so if you are feeling God saying that to you right now, I want you to do a bold thing as a child would do. Raise your hand and say, I want Jesus right now. And I want to come to him right now. So raise your hand if that is you. And as people are raising their hands here, I can't see because of the light's here. But what I want to do as we close here. Those of you that are around these people that are raising their hands, I want you to, to just go to them and just pray for them, okay? Just two or three of you, go to them and pray with them and talk them through how to receive Jesus into their life right now. Can we do that? Raise your, keep your hands raised and make sure that someone is not being missed to be prayed for right now. What is God speaking to us? How do we respond? How do we help and assist children to come to Jesus instead of getting in the way? Let's do this with reckless abandonment. And I think God's favor is really going to be poured out even more on this community.